Welcome to your t-test tutorial. First we'll start with preparing data. Before we can conduct our t-test analyses, we need to make sure that our data is set up properly. So this will be a little bit different depending on whether we are running an independent samples t-test or a paired samples t-test. So to start, uh, I'll show you how to set up the data for an independent samples t-test. So if you recall, when we have an independent samples t-test, we're looking at the influence of a categorical variable on a uh, interval or ratio dependent variable. So this means that we need our independent variable to indicate the category and our dependent variable to actually have the data for what we're looking or what we're looking at comparing. So let's say we're interested in comparing gender and test scores. So we need to create two variables. One will be the gender score and the other one will be the test scores. So we do here gender test. So let's say for gender we will use one to indicate men, two to indicate women, and we can just enter some participants right here. So maybe we'll make 12 of them. So we have indicated our men and our women and now their test scores. So let's say this is on 10. Excellent. Okay, so this is fine for an independent sample t-test. It's pretty straightforward. We have our categorical variable and our dependent variable that is interval or ratio. Very straightforward. So things get a little bit more tricky when we're trying to set up a paired samples t-test. So if you recall, we are no longer using a, another variable to indicate the two groups. Instead, we're looking at the same people both times. So what that means is that we need a score for each person for both of the groups that we're comparing. So in most cases, when we're looking at a paired samples t-test, we're comparing two or people twice, usually before and after some sort of manipulation or incident or time passing. So usually you can think of one of the variables being time one, the other variable being time two, where the independent variable is the time that's passed or the event that happened in between the two of those times, and the dependent variable is the actual measures on both variables. So let's say that instead of being interested in the effect of gender on test scores, we're interested on whether or not people's test scores improve after having taken the stats course. So we did a little statistics test at the beginning of the course, another one at the end, and we want to see if people have better scores. So in this case, we are no longer going to make a grouping variable to make the before and after groups, but instead we need to enter everyone's data for the first test and everyone's data for the second test. So we'll call this test one, and the second one here, test two. So if we go back to our data set, let's say the test one scores look something like this. And our test two scores got a little bit higher right here. So what we have are, we have enough variables to run an independent sample t-test with these two variables and a paired samples t-test here. And what we notice is that on the independent samples t-test, we have our gender variable creating our groups. So we have six men and six women. So we have a one score for each participant. Okay, we have, these are the scores for our women, and these are the scores, or sorry, other way around. These are the scores for the men. These are the scores for the women. On our paired samples t-test example, we have 12 sets of scores for both time points. So test at the beginning of the semester, and then test after the students took the course. So in this case, we have 12 participants per group instead of six, and there is a whole separate variable for both time points in the analysis. Next, we'll look at independent samples t-tests. We will retake our example of an independent samples t-test where we were interested in examining whether gender so being male or female, had any influence on test scores. So using that same example, uh, we can see here that I have added participants. So instead of having just 12, we now have 30. And we're going to look and see whether gender, so being male or female, has an influence on test score 
and what we're looking for are mean differences for these two groups. So we want to see if the mean for males and the mean for females is different. So the analysis, uh, we can find it right here in Analyze Compare Means Independent Samples T-Test. So first things first, we need to specify our grouping variable, which is our independent variable. So in this case, we're going to use gender. Pull that here. And then we need to define our groups. So this just lets SPSS know which values to use. So in our case, group 1 can be 1, and group 2 can be 2. Uh, if these were different values for the groups, you could indicate that here. SPSS also has this option here to use the cut point. So what this would be is used in a case where you have a continuous variable that you would like to use in a t-test analysis. So an example of that might include uh, perhaps a variable like age, and instead of wanting to run a analysis to see whether there's a relationship directly between age and the dependent variable, you may instead be interested in knowing whether people who are older have a certain um, performance or score on the dependent variable compared to people who are younger. And what you could do in this case, if you have specified a uh, continuous variable as the independent variable, you could select a value here that is falls within that data set and SPSS will take the values above that and make one group and the values below it and make another. But in this example, we just need to use groups one and two. So we can click OK. And then next, we just need to bring our variable here into the dependent variable list, which says test variables. And then besides that, we have no other options to select. Uh, you can see here um, that we do have an option of uh, excluding the participants by either a case, uh, sorry, a list wise or analysis by analysis wise. However, this only applies to, sorry, this only applies in cases where we would be running multiple t tests at once. Okay, so next we can click OK. Alright, we have our output here, and what we can see is that SPSS has generated two tables for us. So one here is just our statistics based on our two groups. So what we see is um, the test scores for men and the test scores for women. So we see that we have 15 participants in each group, and that the men had a score of 6 and the women had a score of, or sorry, a mean score of 6, and the women had a mean score of 8.13. Then we have the standard deviation as well as the standard error. So looking here, we can already see that there are some differences between the two groups. Uh, looks about two points on 10. And we would look in this table here to see whether or not that difference is large enough to be statistically significant. So since we're conducting an independent sample t-test and we're dealing with two different groups of people, one of the assumptions for this particular analysis is that we have equal variances in both groups. So we can see here, based on the standard deviation, that these are approximately similar. So we can probably already assume that we do have equal variances. However, there is a test below that is going to tell us for sure. And sometimes you might see things here that are wildly different, and that would suggest that um, the groups don't have equal variances. Anyway, uh, so the equal variance test is actually just right here. It's a little bit confusing because SPSS inserts it in the same table as the rest of the results when really it should sort of be on its own table right here. So the key thing we're looking at is whether this value here is significant. So what these two cells represent are the results for Levine's test for quality of variances. And essentially, we are looking for something that's bigger than 0.05. So unlike when we're looking at our probabilities and we want something that's smaller than 0.05, in this case, we want something larger because a significant result would mean that we have a significant issue in, or that our data is significantly um, heterogeneous. So it is not homogeneous. There is a difference in the variances between the two groups. So in this case, we have a value of 0.718, which is much, much, much larger than 0.05. So we can conclude that we don't have a problem and that we have equal variances in these two groups. So what that means is that 
when we're interpreting the results of the next test, which is basically all of these cells here, we're going to interpret the line where it says equal variance is assumed and not this line here where we made a correction and it says equal variance is not assumed. So in this case, this is bigger than 0 0.05, so we are going to interpret this row of the data. So what we can see here is that we have a t value of negative 9.03 for 28 degrees of freedom and this value uh, sorry, this t here for this degrees of freedom is very unlikely since our probability is at 0 0.05 or much smaller than 0 0.05. So we can conclude that there is in fact a significant difference between these two groups. And then here the rest of the um, columns represent the mean difference. So this value here is just that one, sorry, this one subtracted by that one. Uh, we have the standard error on the difference as well as the confidence intervals on the mean difference. Okay, so what this is giving us is 95% confidence that the true mean difference falls somewhere between negative 2.62 and negative 1.65. So we have a negative value. Uh, if we had coded the groups opposite where men had been two and women had been one, we would it would simply just flip the results. Everything would still be the same value, but it would no longer be comparing men with women, but women with men. So let's pretend that in this case, instead of having a non-significant Levine's test, we had a significant Levine's test. So this would mean that we have a, diff a problem here uh, with our variances and that one group has more variability than the other. So what this would mean is that we need to make a correction to our degrees of freedom and we are going to be using a different critical value for interpreting whether or not our t is significant, or t value is significant. So if this is smaller than 0 0.05, instead of interpreting this line, we're going to interpret the bottom one here that says equal variance is not assumed. So we see that the t value stays the same. However, where things get different is right here with the degrees of freedom. So instead of having a value of 28, we have a value of 27.986, which I realize is close to 28, but since it's not exactly 28, we would be using a different value in the t table to determine the critical value of t. So in this case, uh, the results are still significant. However, there can be cases where there's a significant result, say here, and one that's not here, or the opposite. So in this case, uh, we are still able to conclude, even though we don't have equal variances, that there is a significant difference between the two groups. And that covers everything for the independent sample t-test. Next we'll look at paired sample t-tests. Finally we'll cover the paired samples t-test. So in this example, if you recall, we are interested in knowing whether students' test scores improved or were different between the beginning of the semester and the end of the semester. So again we have data for 30 participants, but this case, instead of having uh, just 15 people per group, we're going to have 30 people per group because all participants completed test 1 and all participants completed test 2. So to look and see whether the mean score for the group was different at time 1 compared to time 2, we're going to run an independent, sorry, a paired samples t-test. So if we go to analyze, compare means, and click on paired samples t-test, it will bring us to the appropriate analysis. So what we need to do here is insert our pairs of variables. So SPSS allows you to do a whole bunch at once, but for this example, we'll just look at one. So we're interested in putting pair one right here, sorry, and using test one and test two. So if you're to keep clicking test two, oh, okay, it gets upset. It'll add it one more time, but you can just double click to add variables, but we'll actually take that one out and just look at the one comparison. So I should note that if you flip the order of these two variables, it's simply going to flip the uh, sign of all the results. So instead of having a positive value, of a negative value, or vice versa. So in this case, we're comparing group 1 with group 2. Again, under the options, um, they're the same as the independent samples, and we don't actually need to select anything. So with this setup like this, we can proceed with the results.
So for a paired samples t-test, SPSS generates three tables where two of them overlap with what we saw with the independent samples t-test and the other one is an extra. So the first thing we have again are the uh, descriptive statistics for both groups. So we do notice this time that we have 30 participants in each group, which is makes sense. We were looking at all 30 people at two different time points. We can see the average for both groups and we can also see the standard deviation and standard uh, error as well. The next thing we have here is a correlation table or the correlation between the two variables. So since we technically have two data points that are on continuous very or, me or measure at the continuous level, SPSS can technically run a correlation between the two to see if there's a relationship between people's individual scores at time one and time two, and not just the group mean at time one and time two. So whether or not you care if this is significant or not is totally depend on the research question. However, in this case, what we do see is that we have 30 participants. The correlation coefficient, so the R, is equal to 0.224. And the significance for that value is 0.23 or 234, which is much larger than 0 0.05. So what this means is that we don't have a significant correlation between people's scores on time one and their scores on time two. So what this means is that while some people's scores might have gone up on time two, other people's scores went down or some had no change. So doing well on test one did not necessarily mean you did well on test two, as we can see here, or vice versa, since it's a correlation. So in most cases, when we're doing a paired samples uh, t-test, we can just actually ignore this table here. So the important one uh, is the table down at the bottom. So what we have first is the mean difference between the two variables, so test one minus test two. And we have a mean difference of three, which you can see is reflected up there. And then of course we have the standard deviation of the difference score and then the standard error of the difference score. Uh, like in the independent samples t-test, we have a uh, confidence intervals estimating where the true difference lies. And according to this analysis, the true difference between the two groups is going to be somewhere between negative 3.37 and negative 2.63 in 95% of samples. So next, looking here, we have our t-value, which in this case is negative 16.73 and we have our degrees of freedom, which are 29. And for this value, for this degrees of freedom, uh, it's very unlikely, and our significance value is much smaller than 0 0.05. So we can conclude that uh, there is a significant difference between these two groups. And now, just to show you what would happen if we put them in the other order, I will add the other pairing, where we put test two first, followed by test one. And we'll click OK. And what we can see now is that SPS has doubled everything. So pair 1 has test 1 with test 2. Pair 2 has test 2 with test 1. Uh, so all these values pretty much stay the same. But down here, you can see that they are uh, inverted. So we have a negative value here. But when we compare test 2 to test 1, it's a positive value. And that also changes the mean different, or sorry, the confidence intervals, as well as the actual value of t but the degrees of freedom and significance stay the same. So that covers everything for the paired samples t-test. And now we'll look at one sample t-tests. Okay, as a final example, let's say that we wanted to see how uh, the students in the class compared to the national average on uh, their grades. Uh, so let's say that now we have their final uh, percentage grade in the course. So I'll just put this as course grade, um, and we can see that this is reflected in kind of a final score out of 100. So we'll, I'm just going to put average scores here. those and delete these three okay so let's say that the national average uh, we know is 65% uh, um, and we want to see if the students in this course 
are in line with that uh, percentage or not. So to do this, we're going to go to Analyze, um, Compare Means, and this time we're going to select the one sample t-test. Um, and this is actually uh, pretty easy uh, to set up. Uh, so in this case, you only want to pick um, one variable unless you want to compare a bunch of them to the same mean at the same time. But in our case, we're just going to look at uh, course grade. Um, and on terms of options, there's nothing you need to select here and there's nothing you need to select under bootstrap. So really it's just grabbing the variable. Um, but what you do have to do is set what the test value is. Um, so what this is, is the mean of the population that we're interested in looking at. Um, so let's say that, for example, the overall average uh, uh, is, or for Canada is 68%, and we wanna see if our students did better than um, that average. So what we would do is enter that right here, um, and then we would click OK, and then the output opens, and it looks very similar to the outputs from the other t-tests um, in the sense that we have two tables, uh, but uh, it's actually quite simple. So first we can see that for the class that we have, our course grade um, for 30 students, uh, the average was 80.73, and we have the same descriptive uh, statistics that we get each time, which are the standard deviation and the standard error of the mean. So we can see here standard deviation was just about 10. Um, and then we have the uh, test uh, output. So we can see here one sample test. Um, in the top here, we can see the test value where they've put that mean. Um, so there's the 68 that we're comparing this mean with. Um, we have our T value here. We have our degrees of freedom, which is uh, basically the number of participants uh, in our sample minus one. Uh, we have the significance for this. So we can see this actually very, very small. And if I double click into here, I can see, yes, it's actually very, very small. So it's um, 0. 0.000000, uh, about eight zeros. <laughs> Um, and then finally here, this time the mean difference represents the difference between our test value um, and the mean in our sample. And then finally we have that same confidence interval uh, around this, uh, sorry, around um, the size of this mean difference here. So it could be 95% of cases it's going to be between uh, 9 and 16.46. So as we can conclude um, from this particular one, our mean of 80.73 was a lot bigger than the national mean of 68% and that we can see here based on the size of uh, the t-test and as well as the uh, probability associated with that value. Uh, so that is how you calculate a one sample t-test. Thank you.